Hey, lately I've been using my Profit Rev 2 in my productions, so I'm gonna just show you how I patch that up with Logic so I can control it via MIDI. Yeah, I find hardware synths are a lot more conducive to creativity, so follow along, I'll show you how I do this. Whoa. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna create a new audio track. For some reason, my Logic always has it panned, right? If anyone knows <laughs> why that is, let me know. But I'm going to just rename it Profit Rev 2. Click on Input Monitoring. And I have my audio out going from my Profit to the Input 1 of my Apogee Duet. Or I guess Input 2. So yeah, I'll make sure that Input 2 is selected. And then yeah, you can test out and make sure just audio is going. And after that, uh, yeah, just make sure you have a MIDI controller connected up via USB to your DAW. Then create a new external MIDI track. Select your MIDI controller. I'm just doing my Kai MPK MIDI out. And you can create it. Um, if you hit Option C, you can also color coordinate it. My MIDI cable is red, so we're going to go with red. So yeah, you're going to want to have a MIDI cable connecting the MIDI out of your MIDI controller to the MIDI in of your profit, and then make sure that your hardware synth is receiving MIDI. Then you can test it out. What I usually like to do as well is kind of group these. Also, I'm gonna make sure that this looks kind of like my synth. And for some reason I like blue for synths, so we're doing that. You can right click and click create track stack, and I create a summing stack. And then do profit rev2, rename this one audio. So yeah, now it's just a nice little stacked instrument. So I'm going to just lay down a chord progression to kind of show you how MIDI can kind of let you be more creative with audio and how after it's recorded you can fiddle with knobs on your external hardware synth. So yeah, I programmed some drums and edited the MIDI a little bit. Kind of want this to be a bit lower, actually, so I'll just pitch shift it an octave down. Another fun thing about MIDI. So yeah, what's cool is now I can record this to an audio track by pressing record and then fiddle around with the cutoff because I have my hands free. And yeah, I'll just flatten. I like that take. It adds a lot more pumping and a lot more groove because you can just play in time. Actually, I'm gonna draw in some some bass, make it a little more a little more oomph. Uh, my prophet only has four voices, so that's kind of why I can do different takes and now get a lot more voices out of it just by layering audio. And I'm gonna actually just transpose it another octave and see how that sounds. Yeah, it just adds a lot more fullness. So I'm going to just bounce that as well. Audio is so much funner to work with. Like it just can create a reverse really quick just by going like this, in reverse. And yeah, that would be like a great intro. I'm going to fade it in. And then actually I'm going to just high pass filter it. Yeah, now I can just switch patches and just keep playing around with my synth. So yeah, here we go. So yeah, I find recording MIDI to audio, it just helps me complete music much faster. When it's MIDI, I'll always tinker with the positions of notes. I'll be like, oh, maybe that could be just a little bit over. I don't know, that's a weird example, but MIDI seems like it's unfinished. Whereas once I record it to audio, it's like, that is the take. So I'm gonna just move forward and that's what I'm gonna use. That's my process. Um, if you have different ways or different methods, totally cool. But this is me showing you how I work. I'm gonna try and do more videos like this. So if you find this informative, please let me know. Or if there's any topics that you want me to cover, I will gladly help. This is the fun little loop I made. <laughs> okay, I'll play you out for real here. <laughs>